This is the Lone Peak 5, and this year Ultra has put its ego foam in the Lone Peak, making it ready for any road, any trail, or any terrain. But can this shoe deliver on that claim? It's time to talk about the Lone Peak 5 after 100 miles. Twelve point three two miles, eight minutes, thirty four seconds per mile, and one hundred forty six beats per minute today. Going for a run down in Guttenberg, left the car over at Uncle David's shop for a quick once over and oil change. And while I was waiting, I thought I'd go for one of my favorite runs in the area, heading up to Miners Creek Road. To get there, I have to go up a pretty steep uphill that lasts for a very long time. And then it's a lot of rolling, gradual downhill on dirt roads in some beautiful Iowa scenery. A perfect place to round out my 100 mile review with the Lone Peak 5. Now, before I give you my thoughts on this shoe and how it's fared, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that was sent to me by Roadrunner Sports for the purpose of review. However, nobody's paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Ultra Lone Peak 5 after 100 miles. First, let's quickly go over some specs. This is a 25 millimeter stack height shoe, and all of Ultra shoes are zero drop, meaning the amount of stack height that you have in the heel is the same amount of stack height that you have in the forefoot. So we've got 25 millimeters of Ego Foam. Now the Ultra Ego Foam is a foam that I really enjoyed. I first experienced it in the Escalante 2.5. Really enjoyed it in that road shoe and now we're getting to see it in the Lone Peak. Now this is the first Lone Peak that I've ever run in so I don't have any previous experience to compare it against. We've got a foot shaped shoe here. That's something that Ultra is known for. And so not only is the toe box a little bit wider to give your foot a little bit more space, very useful if you're gonna be in the shoe for a very long time as your foot can tend to swell. On the outsole, we've got Ultra's Max Track outsole with trail claws to further its trail credentials. This shoe also has gator attachment, a Velcro attachment at the heel, and then a loop or at the forefoot. And then it also has a stone guard. Altogether, this shoe comes in at a weight of 11.1 ounces or 314 grams. Now let's talk about what it's been like to run in this shoe for the last 100 miles. I've been really enjoying the Ego Foam that's in the Lone Peak. It's one of the more comfortable trail shoes that I've ever run in. I was really enjoying the comfort that this shoe can provide. The materials in the upper are all strong and durable. We've got that ripstop material that's in the toe box. And then we get a padded, almost like synthetic leather type of material that gives extra protection from the elements along the rest of the upper. And together it makes a system that is very durable, but also very soft and again, comfortable to wear. Comfort seems to be the main objective that I'm getting out of this shoe. The entire shoe is something that you could very easily spend the entire day in, whether you're going for an ultra marathon race or whether you're just going out there for a day long adventure of running. The Ultra Lone Peak 5 is something that has that all day wearability. But it hasn't been a shoe that I've wanted for every single run or every single use case on the trails. The one area or the one situation where I didn't really find that the Lone Peak was as exciting of a shoe to run in was when the run was gonna be a little bit faster or a little bit more technical. And I think a lot of that has to do with that foot shaped toe box. Uh, and I think it just had a little bit too much room for me. For some of you guys, that might be a plus. That might be your favorite thing about the shoe. But for me, what that ended up meaning was that on times when I wanted to go a little bit faster or where I had to make a lot of sharp turns, I felt like I was sliding around in the inside of the shoe. So I felt a little bit less confident going down steeper downhills or going through sharp turns because I wasn't sure if I was going to keep sliding even though the base of the shoe had firm grip into the ground. So that was a situation where I didn't love it and I found myself reaching for it only on the days where I was gonna be going out there for some easy miles on the trails. The other thing that I didn't love about the shoe is that I feel like it's either 
not tall enough of a shoe or the stone guard needs to be a little bit more dense. I felt like I was feeling a little bit too much of some of the rocks that I was running on and some of the dirt roads. Anything that was pokey definitely kind of felt like it was coming through the shoe in terms of feeling a little bit of discomfort. So those are the two main things that I would say that I didn't love about the shoe. But overall, the foam is holding up really well and I'm still feeling that really nice plush comfort with the shoe combined with the upper and also with the softer lugs that are on this outsole. Uh, and I'm still feeling like the shoe can still handle a really long day out there on the trails. The areas that I am seeing a little bit of wear is primarily just in the outsole. And even then it's usually just in this outer edge of the outsole here. Normally where I see a lot of wear in my shoes, at least on my road shoes, is right underneath the pads of the foot here. And then sometimes in the back side of towards the heel. Uh, here I'm seeing it more just kind of like along the entire edge of the shoe. And in terms of that wear, it's right about at where I would expect a hundred mile shoe to be. Maybe it's a little bit more wear than I would expect, but not by much. It's pretty much right in line with kind of what I'm thinking in terms of what wear should look like for a shoe with this kind of use in it. There's still plenty of life left in it, still plenty of grip. I'm not concerned about that at all. I think it's all holding up pretty much exactly as it should. The upper is in pristine shape. Uh, it's a little bit discolored from being loved, but other than that, it's holding up really well. Still very comfortable in terms of the materials and everything's holding up really well, exactly as I would expect for a 100 mile shoe. The only one area that I think uh, is a, maybe just a visual problem is uh, that there is a crease developing right back here. The heel is very floppy, which I enjoy about ultra shoes. Um, but for some reason with the materials back here, the heel cup area of this shoe has been sloppy from the beginning. And I think it's just starting to look a little sloppier in terms of just the way that the shoe is kind of settling in and I don't think it functionally is going to create a problem, but it just doesn't look quite right in terms of the way that part of the shoe is aging. But other than that, I feel like the shoe is holding up really well. I don't think that this is a shoe that's going to conquer any terrain uh, or any trail. I would probably limit it to something that's a little bit more buffed out, something that's gonna be a, a little bit less craggy. So if there's lots of sharp things, that's kind of where I would say, I'm not sure if I'm gonna wear the Lone Peaks or if I'm trying to go fast or there's gonna be a lot of downhill, then it's a shoe that again, I'm not sure that I am going to be reaching for. I might look for something that's a little bit more buttoned up, even if it still has that foot shaped toe box, uh, but something that just fits my foot just a little bit better. So those are my thoughts on the Ultra Lone Peak 5 after 100 miles. If you have any questions about the shoe, feel free to put them in the comments down below or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do right here on YouTube Monday through Friday. I'd love to be able to talk to you in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?